Welcome to Star Wars Action News, helping Star Wars collectors collect better. Well, here to join us and talk about New York Comic Con is Matt Booker from JediNews.uk, who crossed the ocean to go to New York. It's only a little pond. <laughs> it's not that far. You've done it. You know, it's not that bad. It's a small world after all. Well, I think it just goes to show how big New York is getting that. And it wasn't just you. Several people from Jedi News came over to see what was going on in New York. Yeah, Mark was with me and James was in the city already working. So he came in and did the show with us on Saturday and Sunday. And just we all had a blast. It was great. So what is it about New York this year that brought you there? And have you been to the New York Comic Con before? Uh, for the other guys, it was their first time. For me, it was my fourth. I was actually the first ever one many years ago when it was literally the building the block was in. You know that first building at like the lower end of Javits? Uh -huh. yeah, the first show was just that building there and the little bit upstairs on the mezzanine where the lovely press office was. Wow. And stuff. So yeah, that was a small con. Heroes was big at the time. So it was quite a few years ago. But yeah, I, I love the city. I've been many times before to different events and Kevin Smith events and all the rest of it. I love the place. So I've done Toy Fair and all the rest of it. So is there something specific about this year's New York Comic Con that drew you over? Or was it just to experience a con and get to be in New York for a while? I own and run a comic shop. So, uh, yeah, just to come and do the con and have a blast and hang out with my mates and see friends I don't see often enough from all over the world. Yeah, I was only able to stay a couple of days. I had a family engagement this year, which meant I couldn't stay Except I was there for Thursday and Friday, and normally I wouldn't make a trip for that. I honestly would be like, well, that sucks, I have to miss the con. But this year, The Force Awakens, and of course Hasbro always having their Twas the Night Before Comic-Con party, because they don't have a booth at the con, instead they just invite the press to a place to get us drunk and take shaky photos of toys in a dimly lit environment... We didn't get drunk. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> That's because I wasn't there. <laughs> yes, that would be the one. No, I, I got drunk on two drinks because I had barely eaten all day. But no, it was good. It was a good party. Uh, just good to see lots of good friends. All the, all the different sites were there, a lot of them, you know. And it was just nice to hang out with people and meet up and see some new toys and speak to the, uh, the new guy in charge of Hasbro toy development for Star Wars, who's a Brit. Yeah, one of the Steves. Yes, <laughs> yeah, Mr. Steve, who had a good chat with after the Hasbro panel. Really nice bloke and had a chat with him about what he, where he came from in Hasbro. And he started off in, in the UK doing the Action Man line and doing other products that were UK centric only. And now has managed to jump over the pond and design the, the best toy line out there, I think. Yeah, I I gave him lots of compliments in our one on one interview as well that we'll be playing later in the show. I look forward to hearing that. They had a lot of Star Wars out there, just an absolute ton of Star Wars, but it was everything from the Nerf blasters that they had targets set up to, to the newly announced titanium helmets, to the rechristened Jedi heroes that are now galactic heroes. They're cute. I like those. I thought they were really good fun. A bit more articulation. They're just the Jedi Force figures from... A couple of years ago. Was it Jedi Heroes from a couple of years ago? You keep renaming it. Yeah, I, th I thought Jedi Force was the, like, five or six inch figures. But yeah, they do keep renaming this. It Maybe yeah. it was Jedi Force and n now it's Galactic Heroes again. I don't know. Nothing will ever compare to the old Galactic Heroes. No articulation, a bit, inch and a half tall. Fantastic. One of the best, funnest product ranges out there. My kids now play with the ones I've got. So we've got a Falcon, loads of other bits. And it still gets plenty of playtime and still enjoyable. And we've got a Doctor Who one that the British company made. So they have tea parties in the Falcon, says my daughter. It's toys they play with it. That's what they thought. So, of course, they also had the next few Black Series six inch figures, some of which we knew were coming. And but the chance to see them in person for the first time, including elderly Han Solo. <laughs> yeah, senior, senior Han. Uh, just a fantastic figure. If you got it in the light right and, you know, you saw it properly and you could get up close to it, the sculpt is just spot on. I'm really, really impressed with that. I was also excessively impressed with the face sculpt on it. My line is that they captured Harrison Ford's appearance exactly how he'd look if you told him, Harrison, you have to stand there while we 3D scan you. And he's mildly <laughs> annoyed. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. I don't think they put enough grey hair in him because of, of when you compare it to the trailer, the tiny little, tiny little bit of footage we've seen. 
But yeah, it looked brilliant. I'm, I'm hoping it comes out as good as the prototype, which more often than not they do. Just keep those paint lines tight. I know there's a lot of pessimism on our Facebook page and on our forums. Like, how many times have we seen a great prototype and a horrible figure? But Too many in my day, but, you know, we can but hope. Sometimes they absolutely knock it out of the park, and sometimes they get it near enough right. Constable Zuvio looks cool. Doesn't look the most desirable to me. We'll wait and see what, what and how and what he is in the movie to then fall a bit more in love with him. Most of what we saw, I guess, was Wave 3 stuff, because we saw the Resistance Trooper, and that's a Wave 3 figure. Yep, I'd have thought so. And I'm not seeing Allo Nasty in a Wave yet. No, but he's in Wave 2 of the 3 and 3 quarter inch, so he yeah. must be a fairly good character to do in <laughs> 6 inch, because they showed some of the slides for the how they designed him and stuff, didn't they? Yeah. In the panel, that looked good. But I was actually really impressed with those Black Series figures. I think all these Hasbro events leave me wanting more. And I understand that Disney has said everything we can see is from the first 30 minutes of the film. They're trying to hold back every possible secret. But it's kind of frustrating to be so close to major waves of figure releases and not be able to see what they are. Correct. It's, it's you know... Being a retailer for this long, I'm, I'm used to seeing stuff six months ahead of time. And even with this lot, I'd seen ever so little. I'd seen ever so little. And I'm being offered stuff by wholesalers for post-Christmas, and they're still showing me the Wave 1 photos. Even though I know what's in Wave 2 and I've already had cases of Wave 2, 3, 3 quarter inch, I'm still being shown Wave 1 photos from some wholesalers because they don't even have the information. I'm like, but I saw those last week and I touched them. And they're like, yeah, we can't tell you because Hasbro UK says we can't. So... You know, the chain of command and the, what you can tell and what you can't tell has been kept very close. I'm amazed they kept so many secrets till so late a date this year. Yeah, it's incredible because when they were filming, I know so much was leaking from the set. People were there with telephoto lenses. But I guess once they got inside the studio, just nothing got out. It's good to know. I'd, we're veterans of the uh, Star Wars saga in the modern era. And uh, knowing less to me is now getting to be good. Because I don't want to spoil the movie. I'm glad they're keeping a complete tight pair of thumb screws on it. I'm of two minds. I want to know the toys that I'm going to be buying. I want to know what is the future holding. But I don't want to know what place they have in the story. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'd like to know what I'm buying so I can gauge it and get my purchasing power right. And I'm sure a lot of the retailers are the same. That's why you're not seeing as much out there. But I don't know. It's, it's a strange one. It's a very different new era for Star Wars collecting. Then they had a bunch of three and three quarter inch stuff out, the five POA, some new figures there. Again, the Resistance Trooper, Kylo Ren was out, a couple other types of troopers, the TIE Fighter pilot. Yeah, there's some cool stuff. Some very interesting product coming out. More of interest to me was what was at the panel. And I've said this, and I think I might have said it to you at the con, I can't remember. But to me, this was the best Hasbro panel since like 2012, since before they ever even touched Angry Birds. I cannot recall a more informative and honest panel where they stood up there and, of course, they did a QA. and a they, They'd not done Q&As at some of the panels at Comic-Con and Celebrations recently. They know what the questions are and don't want to answer them. Well, at San Diego, we were really, like, shocked. Everyone was looking around because the panel was over, like, in 25 minutes. And everyone just looked at each other like, wait, there's more coming, right? And there was nothing. And they did not do a Q&A. Nope. No, I think it was very honest of them to do a Q&A. And, and let people ask questions. And you did get the general sort of, I've got this question again. We've heard it all before, but the person that hadn't heard it. But there were some great questions answered. And I'm, it was nice to see them open up a bit more again. Yeah, I just, I liked that they were forthright. And we didn't get marketing doublespeak. We got Lucasfilm didn't give us a whole lot of time. We couldn't make enough to ship out for Force Friday. And we know that the X-Wing doesn't have the greatest plastic. We tried something new, and it didn't quite work out. I mean, I like them being so forthright about it. But very honest answers, like if your weapons on the wings, like the, the guns that you clip onto the wings aren't working right for you, contact customer service. The numbers on every Hasbro product out there that they sell you, it's on the bottom or on the back of the box in the small print, the phone number, ring up customer service, they'll replace them for you. They've done it a few times before. They're not, you know, they're not a perfect company. They do make mistakes. Every does. And I love the new figures they were showing and the detail they went into about them. You know, they'd have the one picture that's just like the glory shot of the figure, but then showing us the 3D sculpts and getting into the fact that they're 
doing some of that gentle giant scanning of the actors and it, they were talking about like they were talking about the resistance trooper and they said not only did they scan the outfit they found the extra who was wearing the outfit to make sure that who they were scanning was what we see in the movie and i think i mean that's a great attention to detail that's going to provide more accurate likenesses in both scales yeah you don't see it in the three three quarter inch figure at all the detail but in the six inch figure and the photos that have been posted and that we saw absolutely knocks out the park should be a really really cool figure and i think the mask moves up or something on it but yeah it looks really really nice did you have any of the other lines that really impressed you with the titanium helmets or anything else they were doing the helmets, the prototypes they had, they were plastic. And we were all looking at them going, oh, $15 for two of these little plastic helmets. Oh, I'm not sure about that. Plastic should be not called titanium. And then I spoke to one of the guys there and said, oh, no, they will be cast to metal. These are just the early prototypes that we've got here because they're not due out till um, 2016, the early part of 2016. So they look, they look really good. And I think if they're good quality metal, yeah, they'll, they'll be nice and really funky pieces. I have heard a rumor they're using sculpts or maybe using sculpts that are on the... Diago Cini uh, collector helmet range, like you know the Blil, Bill Millennium Falcon, and the chess pieces that the Marvel do, and all that stuff. The part works in Europe. I've heard that they're the same sculpts as that by somebody, but I don't know how true that is because I've not really had time to compare because it's only out in France so far. The helmet collection. That's right, and thank you for clearing that up because I was at the party and I saw those titanium helmets, and I was talking with Mitch there, and I'm looking at them. I'm like, those don't look metal, and so I kind of looked around. Nobody was looking, so I touched them, and I'm like this is plastic. <laughs> and then I was talking to somebody else like the next day and they're like, oh, those helmets, those were die cast. I'm like, really? Because then my feeler is way off. Because, <laughs> But now to know that those prototypes were plastic, but they're going to be die cast helps. I picked one up and turned it over and I could see the sort of uh, mark, factory markings inside, like the little letters and numbers and stuff. And then got told off by the lady for picking it up. Because she thought, oh, their prototypes don't touch them. So I put it back down. But then I was like, yeah, because I just picked it up. I think, yeah, I've always just gone and grabbed stuff. And, oh, it's a prototype? Sorry. You know. <laughs> there was no labeling or marking on stuff, though. Normally, Hasbro will have you, like, little labels on the... It's normally when you see them at the convention floor in their booth there. But even at some of the parties, they normally have some labels. Or somebody who's got a bit of knowledge about it. And, yeah. They, they, they knew what they were doing, sort of. What about the other companies that you saw there? What stuck out to you? Huge list. Absolutely massive list. I mean, I, I shot for the Jedi News Facebook and Instagram. Uh, probably close to 1,500 photos I shot, and I've uploaded the best of them. But a small rundown of companies there. Uh, we Love Fine had some new pieces. Beast Kingdom with their egg attack figures, which is the first time I've seen in person. They were phenomenal. Oh, yeah, I do love the egg attack stuff. They... They're, they're fun. They're fun. Yeah, and they're really good. Tamashii Nations uh, had their new samurai pieces, and I'm a hardcore Boba Fett focus collector, and to see that Boba Fett there in person was phenomenal. Oh, yeah, I pre-ordered that from Dorkside Toys. I have... You have done already. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't have the Vader, I don't have the Stormtrooper, but a Ronin Boba Fett was a must-buy. Just beautiful. Just an exquisite retake on the character and the stuff. Airhog's got to play with the uh, Airhog Falcon. Love that piece. That's really cool. Did you drive it? Yep, had a quick go. They didn't let me drive it, but they let me uh, pick it up and they launched it from my hand. It's exceptionally lightweight. I mean, it has to be to fly the way it does. But I did like that it can hover and it can move. It was. It looks like it's fun, but it also looks like an item where the novelty is going to wear off pretty quick. Yeah, I found that. I had a look at Koto, some fantastic stuff from them. Oh, Kotobukiya was my favorite booth to visit that weekend. I mean, the stuff they're doing in the Artifacts Plus line, and I don't know if you talked to them, but their Captain Phasma they had out was a prototype. It was painted. They tried to do a high gloss to it, but that's going to be vac metalized at retail, and they don't know if they're going to do the that's gonna be battle sweet. damage, but it's going to be, I think, the first, if not the only, chromed, phasma because i asked hasbro and they're like yeah we can't do that it, and not for the price point anymore they said it's uh environmental issues oh really it's bad for the environment to vac metalize and well i will tell you that for things being brought into the united states they just instituted a number of dumping taxes because they don't want things in landfills and that might have been under it like uh, colored pencils in the United States have shot up in price because there's a new dumping tax on them that is just, you have to pay this if you're importing them and it's crazy. 
I mean, it was the same with all the figures falling off the bubbles the last couple of years, that that was all because they changed the laws on the glue you can adhere figures to their bubbles with and their cards. So that was what changed that. So, yeah, the laws are changing on how safe and how environmentally friendly you can be nowadays. Yeah, our listeners will be able to hear in the interview coming up. I didn't get the impression it was a law that they couldn't vac metalize so much as it was bad for the environment to vac metalize. But that's fair enough. By the same token, it's like, you know, I grew up with a vac metalized 3PO. I want a vac metalized Phasma. And the fact that Kodo's doing it and they're getting the BB 8 put out and they had the Kylo Ren on display, they had that, right? Lovely stuff. Yeah. Really, really nice. They've always done some of the best stuff. I wish they were still doing their large scales on the Star Wars because they were phenomenal. And I love just chatting with Dan at Kodo because he and I just started completely geeking out on that Phasma. He turned it around and I'm like, God, look at all the texture you did on the cape. I was just admiring all the wrinkles on the cape. He's like, yeah, but look at this strap here. And look at this thing here. What do you think that is? And he's like all excited to see the movie to understand what all of it is. And I'm like... You know, this is probably just like being in 1979 and having a Boba Fett figure and wondering what the Wookiee pelts are and wondering about the scene where he's going to slaughter the Wookiees. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of Phasma, I did get to speak to um, Ruby's Masquerade and I pointed out to the girl there that the, uh, is this a boy's costume or a girl's costume on the Phasma? And she said, oh, it's a boy's costume. And I said, yeah, but you know, it's played by a girl and the girl there really hadn't got a clue about Star Wars. So she got another member of staff. And I inquired as to why the Ruby's costume was put out as a boy's costume. And they said, oh, we, that was all over the internet. We got in trouble about that. And I said, yeah, it's probably me reposting a picture on Jedi News. <laughs> uh, the reason was they weren't told the gender by uh, Lucasfilm. Oh. Is what they kind of alluded to. Hmm. So that's why it was put out like that. So sorry, ladies and gentlemen around the world, why Ruby's put that out as a boy's costume. But they weren't told the gender. That's how secretive this movie is. Oh, that that seems to be a mistake. <laughs> mm. I mean, they and they're really hanging the manufacturers out to dry because it's, you know, Rubies who looks foolish. Yeah, and it's the same with Blue Snaggletooth. It's not the first time and it won't be the last. Yeah, and now what's going to happen, sadly, is people are going to get all up in arms and blame Rubies when they went based on what they had. Yeah, you know, you've got to go where you can with it. If guys at Koto want to see what Phasma does and what she is in the movie, they know nothing either. They'll just have had a few photos to run from or maybe a 3D scan of the character. And that's probably it because it's so, so secretive. So other companies you saw, Sphera there with their BB-8. Uh, there was Comic Images with their new plush. The M&M's booth was rather impressive. Did you swing by there? I missed M&M's. I saw Jelly Belly where they were doing huge murals. <laughs> I didn't see M&M's. Oh, M&M's were in the block. And they were giving away free m and samples with little Star Wars pictures on. So that got me excited because you don't get them in England. Uh, Bandai and Namco were there with their battle pods with the sort of standalone cabinets rather than the entire pods. Ruby's were there. Hallmark were there. Mighty Wallet and so much else. Hallmark threw me for a loop this year because I'm used to having their July ornament release and yeah. then their October ornament release. What I'm not used to is then a November ornament release because Kylo Ren was their October. Phasma is their November. Mm -hmm. And then did you get to FX collectibles? Yes. Phenomenal stuff. Did you buy their exclusive Death Star Surface? It doesn't have Boba Fett on it, so pass. <laughs> <laughs> he has standards. I know. I have blinkers like a shy horse. <laughs> I was so yeah. tempted to get that piece, though, being exclusive. It looked really nice, but by the same token, it you can't tell what it is necessarily from what it is. I mean, it's well matted. I love the little plaque they gave it. It's a small enough size that I could have put it in carry-on luggage and not had to worry about breaking it. But And it worried me that they called it set number one, which makes me yeah. think that they're going to just keep doing this. <laughs> and rejigging the sort of alignment of the pieces and maybe use other ones and stuff. No, it was a lovely piece. The, the, the escape pod they'd done absolutely blew me away because it's a, it's a piece of Star Wars that isn't really done very often. So that was really funky. Yeah, I felt like in a way, I know people are saying, and I don't mean to imply that this is incorrect, but the numbers are saying New York Comic Con has more attendees than San Diego Comic Con. Yeah, numbers have come out today from somebody saying it was 150,000. It felt like it. I mean, on Friday, the crush in the block was so bad. Like within 30 minutes on the floor, I just wanted to hit somebody and some 
woman was like just plowing through people thinking saying excuse me is the equivalent of laying on your horn while you start crashing through traffic i didn't find it too bad to be honest i mean i've done san diego a few times but not for a while and it was it was manageable i think reed did a very good job of moving and shifting the sort of human traffic that were there i think the worst problem you get is when a awesome cosplayer stands in the middle of an aisle or gets asked when they're passing can I take your photo? And they go, yeah, okay, and kicks out a really cool pose, and I can appreciate their costume work and what the effort they put in, how much people appreciate it. But sometimes they get stopped by the public in the most inappropriate places and then block up all the traffic. Yeah, I did notice this trip because I was alone. The words, can I take your photo, was an immediate Pavlovian response of, oh, crap, I got to get around them now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but it wasn't bad in most areas, yeah, there were a few pinch points. Yeah, anything around the Star Wars area. When I was trying to look at Bandai, when I was trying to look at Hallmark, Hallmark was horrible. The area around Kotobukiya, Diamond, the Marvel booth there where they had the Star Wars comic stuff. I mean, that entire area was a cluster. I think they put a lot of the popular booths together and some of the video game uh, booths as well, the mm -hmm. Naruto booth. You've, you've put them all together and not given them enough aisle space, I think, is the problem. Mm -hmm. And the bit in the under the upstairs, that sort of low ceiling section gets quite busy as well. But you've got like the really small press in under there because you can't build up too high. But then that gets a bit tight as well in places. But I mean, it's still a good con. But the point I was getting to was despite having such huge attendance, when it comes to what we talk about, and I inclusive all three of us, we it still feels like the baby brother because FX collectibles had great stuff on display. Same stuff I saw in San Diego and in celebration before that sideshow for the first time made the cross country trip to display at New York comic con. And I didn't see anything that wasn't in San Diego. I mean, it's cool if you don't go to all the cons to see it. So I don't mean to discredit it, but they don't appear to be giving the convention the same emphasis as far as reveals go yeah no, there's, there's cool stuff there was lots of different things there at the show and all right well matt thank you very much for joining us i it's a pleasure i hope to see you again in the near future possibly celebration london and for new york comic-con i say star wars fans think about going i know that hasbro was asked about a new york comic-con exclusive figure and they didn't say no because they knew this convention was growing quite a bit so Maybe next year or two years from now, it might become a must go to. I always say to people on my side of the pond too, like, I want to go to Comic Con. I want to go to San Diego. And I say, I've done them both. And personally, I'd do New York from this side of the world because it's cheaper, more affordable. The city is set up for tourists, so you can get much better rates on accommodation, in my opinion. Yes. And from England, the flights are better. Thanks for watching this video. You can see full episodes of Star Wars Action News with more collecting news and reviews at SWActionNews.com. We also have thousands of toy and collectible photos in our photo gallery. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. May the pegs be stocked and the Force be with you.